Hi, my name is Cindy Joy, and at conventions I go by the name Euphoria Huff and Bustle. My business name is Madam Huff and Bustle Steam Couture. I design and create a line of separates for the feminine side of steampunk. I currently have four skirts in production and uh, we use polyester taffeta for most of the skirts, which is machine washable and dryable. They fit a flexible number of sizes uh, from the tiniest waist up to about 55 inches. Uh, they all have button elastic in the waist so that you can cinch them down and uh, have them be a little snug before you put your corset on like we steampunks do, and then lace it up and have it fit comfortably without having it slide down while you're wearing it during the day. They can be layered together or worn with clothes already in your wardrobe. Um, they're, uh, they're a lot of fun to wear. They come in a lot, wide variety of colors that are all uh, taken from the Victorian era We've got a, a tie-on bustle, a Cinderella bustle, an embellished lace skirt, and a pleat brigade. And I'm currently wearing three of the skirts, which you can't see, but I'm giving Charlie a picture so that you can see it. I don't really remember a time when I didn't sew, but I did start sewing. Uh, before the age of five, because I started sewing before I started school, and it was hand sewing, and with scraps that my mother gave me to make clothes for my dolls. And then by eight, I was making clothes for myself on the machine. And then by 12, I was altering patterns. And by 18, I had discovered historical costuming and Renaissance festivals, and I was off like lightning and loved it. I did take a detour from it and was all practical, got a business degree, worked as a CPA, was bored out of my mind, and I went back to school for fashion design. And, uh, and in 2013, I went to my first steampunk event, which was the Victorian Steampunk Ball in Virginia City, which was hosted by High Desert Steam. And uh, I didn't have a lot of notice and we had just moved to Nevada. So I jumped on the web and looked for pictures of what steampunk was and tried to find costumes. And um, I really, I came up kind of dry. It was, uh, Victorians loved a full range of colors. And what I found was black, brown, sometimes red, two or three different styles of skirts. And it just, it left me thinking I can't be the only person who wants more variety, more color, more fun. So I started making my own skirts and, uh, and making them for the people locally. And that's how I got started. I started person to person. The, the first thing I did was a costume for Shelly's daughter. Uh, Shelly uh, gave me a pattern and asked me to make her daughter uh, a costume um, for the steampunk ball the next year. And, uh, and I said, okay, so how do you wanna make it steampunk? And she said, oh, I don't know, just slap a gear on it. So I made the whole skirt a gear. I was like, slap a gear on it? Oh, come on. So <clears throat> this is the Gear Girl skirt. So it's based on the 1860s big skirts and they actually did do crenellations at the bottoms of the skirts. And so what I did was a facing to the outside instead of the inside and, uh, and just did insertions to make spokes for the gears 
in the skirt panel, between the skirt panels and made the whole skirt a gear. So just stick a gear on it. So I just stuck a gear on it. So my first steampunk event was, to, was the Steampunk Ball in 2013. And many people told me that the steampunk event for the whole region was Clockwork Alchemy. So in 2014, we went to uh, Clockwork Alchemy on Memorial Day weekend. Um, but we're also giant gaming nerds. So we did Clockwork Alchemy and KublaCon, which were at that time both on Memorial Day weekend. And we stayed in the KublaCon hotel and I spent the whole weekend at Clockwork Alchemy and my husband and the kids um, went back and forth between the two events. It was, uh, it was a tremendous event and I had so much fun and I just, I loved the whole thing. And it really, Clockwork Alchemy was great. So that was my first taste of Clockwork Alchemy and I've been to, to it every year since and done just a little bit more every time or something a little bit different. And there's so much at Clockwork Alchemy every year that you can, you can experience the event in a different way every time you go. My creative process is very much uh, research and implementation driven. Uh, and it might be because I also have a science background and, a, and a, an auditing background and I don't know. So, so I like I, I chart things out and, and I'm very methodical about my steps. So I start with what is my goal? And so my goal here was to create a line of skirts that uh, could be mixed and matched, worn with stuff people already had, easily packed, easily taken care of, easily put on without help, uh, and look like they came from the Victorian era, and maybe pass if you wanted to wear them at a historical event. So I started there. And then I went to, okay, so let's look and see what we can do. So, so then I went to research and that involved looking at a lot of fashion plates, looking at portraits, looking at photographs, looking at museum pieces and narrowing it down. And I, what I narrowed it down to was the natural form era, which is uh, 1860, no, 1877 to 1882. Uh, and it's, it's sandwiched in between the early bustle era and the late bustle era. And so what happened was the bustle was really big and it flattened out. And then they were like, hey, you know what? We really liked bustles. And then it got really big again, but you had this place in the middle where, you know, you could see yourself getting through the doors at a hotel and maybe sitting in a chair at a hotel and not having it be highly inconvenient. So I kind of focused in on that. And then I, and then I sketched out which ones I wanted to do. And then I started patterning them. And, you know, and I started with a couple skirts and uh, made up a couple samples and I hand them out to my friends and say, okay, wear are these? Tell me how you like them. Tell me what, give me feedback. Tell me if people gave you compliments on them, if you liked wearing them. And, uh, and you know, and so I get their feedback and I make adjustments and I watch them wear them too, because I, I notice things that they don't, um, you know, so then, so I tweak the patterns and make changes and try them again and just keep doing that until I get it exactly how I want it. And then I put them in production and I make a run of 10 skirts so that I can work out all the kinks in the construction. And then I know how long it's gonna take me, because after you've made 10 of them, 
you're not really gonna get any faster at it. So I figure out how long it's gonna take me to make a skirt, and then I can calculate what a fair price is for me and for the customer. And you know, and then and then they go into the line or they go into the okay, so this is really beautiful, but this is kind of a high price point. So we're gonna do this on an on-demand basis. So I have a couple of skirts that, you know, they're really great, but you're gonna have to ask me to make it. I'm not gonna have it in stock all the time. Um, so, and that's kind of, that's kind of how the design process goes for me. And, uh, you know, and, and so, and, and with the fashion plates, they also give you clues on what kind of color combinations to use because at the bottom of the page, the bottom of the uh, engravings, it'll say, you know, this picture is camel and red. And, you know, so you can, you can see what kind of color combinations they used, even though they're black and white ingredients. You know, if I'm going to be honest, nobody needs a skirt like this, but everybody needs to be happier than they are. And these skirts make people happy. You can see when they put them on that they just, they just make them happy. They're like, ah, oh, this, this is so much fun to wear. And this is so much lighter than I thought. It was so big. I thought it was going to be heavy. And it's, you know, and so I've made them so that they're well balanced and they're comfortable and they're fun. So I guess you need them because you need, you need to be happy and you need to be uplifted and you need, you need to know that somebody cares that you get what you want and you and you're happy when you're wearing it. So I think my favorite thing right now is the huff and bustle. And I guess I wouldn't have named it as I wouldn't have named it the huff and bustle if it wasn't my favorite thing. Right. So it's a um, it's your standard poofy bustle. And uh, so the biggest difference between it and a Victorian bustle is it's completely mounted on a fully lined uh, fitted skirt back um, so that you never have to deal with arranging the bustle yourself. In Victorian times, it would have been uh, just like tacked on ribbon pieces that went up to your waist and you would have to arrange it over your bustle every time. And I just was like, no, we're not doing that. It's going to be so that you just put it on and tie it at the waist and you're good to go. And it's got um, fun beads on the side usually um, and a, a generous ribbon to tie at your waist. And they're just a lot of fun to wear. And it has, you can hear the crinoline in it. And uh, the crinoline is what lets it be super poofy. Um, and uh, you can pack it flat in your suitcase and then just shake it out when you get when you're, where you're going and it just puffs back up. So it's super fun to wear. It's just, it's beautiful and I love it. Yep, and it's got darts in the back, four darts, so it just really sits nicely and doesn't slide around at all. And then the, the I uh, added one new thing to the line for Clockwork Alchemy 2020, the clockwork that never happened. And it was uh, these embellished skirts um, that uh, you just put on top of the pleat brigades and they just add this beautiful layer. I'm wearing one now, which you can't see. Um, and uh, they just add a really nice decorative layer when you just really super want to stand out. And they're, they're really beautiful. Uh, these are the Cinderella bustles, so they tie on the side. They have a adjustable elastic band to hold the fullness to the back. 
and they are fully reversible. So you get two colors. And the elastic waist. Adjustable, comfortable, washable, reversible. The only thing they don't have is pockets because, you know, you can have those uh, in the skirt underneath or the pants or you can wear them over pants or whatever you want to wear them over. They're a lot of fun. If you want to find me on the web, you can go to www.shop, S-H-O-P, dot huffandbustle.com and it will redirect you to my Facebook page. And from there, you can contact me via Messenger or you can find my Instagram page. I look forward to seeing you the next time we can get together. But in the meantime, please reach out and let's get together online. Hi, and hello, my name is Vanna White.